Welcome back to the shop, everybody. What I have in front of me here is my birthday present to myself. It is a Lathe Master 5 inch 5C Adjust True Collet Chuck. A lot of the work I do in my shop is usually in softer materials, brass, aluminum, etc. So, you know, a regular 3 jaw or 4 jaw chuck when you tighten down it has a tendency to mar the work. So, I've wanted one of these for a long time because, you know, if you usually putting a work in a collet, you won't mar the work. You won't put nice dings in it everywhere. So I wanted one of these for a long time, so that's why I bought it for myself. I thought I'd do a little review on this chuck, show you the little mods I'm going to do to it because there are a couple I need to do. So if you haven't ever seen a 5C collet chuck, um, especially a set true one, let me go through this with you. Um, so there's three um, counter bores here, and these are for the bolts. They just slide down in to hold it, the actual chuck itself fast to the back plate. Um, what makes it a set true truck is that in four spots on the periphery of the chuck, there are spots for set screws. And what those set screws do is they let you move the chuck relative to the back plate. And let me show you the back plate. So this is just a, a back plate that's designed specifically for my lathe. Here you can see the, the three, well in this case, the three holes for holding the chuck fast to the back plate and then the three holes for holding the back plate fast to the chuck. So this is a nice back plate actually. It's steel. It's this, um, the boss, the perimeter, the perimeter of the boss is ground and then a really nice grind actually in my opinion. And then the, the, the face, both the front and the back face are ground but it's a more coarse grind. And then the same thing with the internal registry for the spindle. It's ground as well. Not quite as nice as the outside one, or this one I should say, but still it's ground. It's obvious that it's ground and not machined. The first modification I need to make to this is a personal preference. So this is a ground surface. The set screws they gave you, well in this case this one, to put into the chuck to register against this are regular cup point hard cut point set screws. That doesn't sit well with me. You know, precision ground surface, we're going to assume it's a precision ground surface, and a cut point set screw. Not a good idea in my opinion. So the first thing I'm going to do is make these. So this is one of the other set screws. This is a, just your set screw. And I basically faced the end, drilled it, and made a little brass piece, and then Loctite it in place to make these brass tip set screws. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I do that. Um, get this stuff out of the way here. This is really how you do it, in my opinion. It's the simplest way. If you had, if I had a collet chuck already, and I had a collet the right size, I could just set the set screws in the, the collet and do it that way. But obviously, I don't. So, what I did is I made my own little DIY, you know, handful of used collet. So all this really is is a piece of aluminum, which is just a case of aluminum stock that I drilled and then tapped for these set screws. In this case, these are M10 set screws. And then I'll just take it over to the bandsaw and then just slit it. So then to use this, all I have to do is, this is the front slit part is the front of the collet, if you will, is take this, you screw it in all the way to the front so that it's sticking out, and then you mount it in the chuck. And I'll go over to the lathe here and I'll show you what we do from there. I've got my little DIY collet mounted up here in the chuck, and I forgot to mention why I'm using a, a collet, if you will. Um, it's a set screw. If I just put that set screw into the, into the regular three-jaw chuck and then crank down on it, I'm going to screw up the threads. So what this does is this aluminum is much softer than steel because these are most likely class 10.9 metric set screws. Regardless of how gnarly the end looks, I mean, they're probably hardened correctly. That's not that hard. Um, but I don't want to screw those up. I, need, I want the threads to be fairly clean. So that's what this does. This aluminum is soft. It's just 60-61. It'll deform around the threads and not screw them up. So let's get to work here. First step is to actually face off. I'm going to just touch off and then I'm going to take 60 thousandths off the end of the set screw.
they're 60 thousandths removed from the end. The next step is to drill a through. spotting drill did its job. Now I'll move on to, in this case, it's just an eighth of an inch drill bit. That's more than enough for this. It's only going to be really used for rotating the tip. I mean, it's not going to take any side load or anything like that. So, actually I should probably split this down. It'd be a little nicer to my drill bit. Up. It's one of the things I don't like about this lathe, I should modify at some point, but I should make this tailstock cam locking. So that's it for the actual drilling and facing of the, uh, the set screw. I've got to do that a couple more times, so I'll do that off camera because that's just going to be boring for you guys. I finished drilling the set screws off camera. I've got a piece of brass bar stock chucked up now. I've got the end faced. So now I need to um, actually make the brass inserts. And the first step is to turn down a section of the rod 3 sixteenths of an inch long. See if this fits. It shouldn't it? Should still be tight. Yeah. So hopefully this last cut should get it right down the sides. Since this is brass and such a small piece, even at 2,000 RPMs, I should be fine. Where did that little tiny piece go? Okay, I found it. It was buried in the chip pan, and that's, that's the problem with making parts of this size. They disappear quickly. So the last step to making the insert is to chuck it up. My chuck 
since it's a smaller chuck pool, will actually hold something this small. Come over and touch off the jaws. In this case, I want to move out 40 thousandths of an inch. So 20, 40, 40, I'm going to cut this off a little long, so I'm going to have to move out more than 40. Go to there. And just face it off. That's one down, I got two more to make. I'll make those off camera and then I'll bring you back to the bench. So as you can see, I finished them all up. I'm back over at the bench. I've gone and cleaned everything with mineral spirits to try to make sure I get any kind of cutting oil or anything that might have contaminated the surface off. Now I just need to um, use the Loctite 603 and get the little brass inserts in place. So it's just a little bit of Loctite there. Put the insert in. Actually, I probably want to put a little bit more on the surface here for this one. A little extra won't hurt. It'll just take a little bit longer to cure. Push it in. Set it upside down on the bench. Then I just got to do the same thing to the other three. And I'll, once it dries, I'll take it back over to the lathe and I'll actually put the chamfer on the edge. I've given the Loctite plenty of time to set, about an hour and a half actually. So the last step in finishing off these set screws is just to chamfer the end, which I'll do now. I'm going to have to run this pretty slow because the width of cut I'm going to take is actually pretty big for my machine. I've got my uh, carriage locked down, so this is basically just going to be a cross slide. You know, I'll still get some chatter, I think. So that's it, I'll take this out, I'll run it through a die just to make sure I haven't messed up any threads, but it should be fine, the other ones were fine. So then I can mount these up. Okay, so I've got the set screws in place, I've mounted the chuck up, and I'll show you the run out that I'm getting right now. Depending on how hard I turn this or how fast I turn it, I'm getting between, I would say, between a tenth and one and a half tenths per revolution. So pretty good, really good actually, especially when you consider I think the deviation of that half a tenth or so I'm getting is just the fact that this is a small lathe sitting on a wooden bench. I'm probably flexing the system, if you will, enough to make that happen. I mean, half a tenth is nothing. Um, so I'm happy with that. If I take it all the way out to the other end, I get about um, four. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off and uh, make permanent studs because right now I've just got the chuck fastened to the spindle with short socket head cap screws, and those are a giant pain in the butt. So. I take this off, switch back to the regular chuck, and I'll make those. I finished the studs off screen. I've got them all in place, and I've got the back of the chuck. I guess, I guess technically this would be the um, adapter plate for the chuck mounted to the spindle. And what I've done is I've gone and turned down the mounting surface. Just because I, when I mounted it by itself, I noticed there was a little bit of run out, and I thought that was probably what was giving me the run out at the far end of my test bar. So I've gone and 
machined it, and I'll show you what I've got. I had about just under a thousandth, maybe about seven tenths, eight tenths, something like that before. And now what I'm down to is anywhere, I would tell you between a half a tenth. Well, now it's not showing anything. So how I did this was I have some inserts that I really like. They work really well for my machine, and that's these inserts from Sandvik. And what they are is they're finishing inserts. I'll show you what they look like. Get you there we go. But why they're so great for my lathe is the depth of cut they're designed for. The minimum depth of cut they're designed for is just four thousandths of an inch, and the maximum is sixty-seven thousandths. So it's really easy for my little lathe here. You know, it's rated at three quarters of horsepower, but it's probably more like two thirds or maybe a half even to take a cut with these and get a good chip and stuff going and get a good surface finish. This is what I made. I mean, it's ultra fine steel wool. But let me see if I can't get you around here real quick and show you what the surface finish looks like. Bear with me while I try and zoom you in and get a good focus. There we go. So as you can see, I mean, that's, that's a good surface finish for this quality of machine. So I'm really happy with that. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'll mount up the actual chuck. I'll get it centered in again and we'll see what the run out is now that I've got it as good as I can get it for this machine. So I've gone and tested everything. I've got it mounted up now. Um, let me show you what I got. So out here 10 inches out from the chuck face is actually about 10 and a half inches. My run out hot low is, um, what is that? Well, let me adjust this. Let's see. Looks like we're doing six and a half tenths. Occasionally it gets down to six and a half tenths. Well, actually now it's not, let's see. Yeah, there it got down to six, 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 right down to six tenths. So six tenths to a high of three point four, three point five, three point six. So there's three thousandths run out, ten inches out from the chuck face, which isn't that bad. Um, well, actually, I'll just show you the reason for that. So right now it's at. Let's put it somewhere, a nice round number. So there's a, there's right at a thousandths. Just me pushing on it with my finger, I can drop it half a thousandths. Pulling it with my pinky, or a finger I should say, raise it at a half a thousandths. So there's play in the spindle bearings. I know there's a little bit, not a whole lot, not enough that matters for me anyway, but that's good enough for what I'm gonna do. I'm never gonna have something sticking this far out of the college hook anyway. But up close to the spindle, See if it's still there. Yeah. Lock it down. Yeah, two tenths. The run out up here by the spindle is two tenths. 